and dirty in the bilge area to take care of the pumps that keep my fish alive in the live wells and they pump water out of my boat when I'm in rough seas and I'm taking on water or for some reason there's a leak. These are extremely important. Now all boats are different. If you're lucky uh, you may not have to remove the batteries or anything else to get access to the pumps in your bilge. Uh, with my boat I had to remove my batteries, my four awesome Trojan SCS 225s and uh, for most boats that's all you're going to have to do. But with my boat I had to go one step farther and I also had to remove a 30 gallon gas tank. Uh, it was kind of a pain, I had to siphon the gas out of it, but I did get it out of there so that I could get access to all the pumps that I want to work on. So uh, I think very few of you are going to have to go through that many steps. I didn't show them because every boat's different and uh, you're probably not going to have to do what I did anyway to get access to your pumps. So let me show you what I've got. I have three yellow Johnson Mayfair pumps in my old bass boat. The pump on the right, the farthest from the transom, is the pump for my aerator, the recirculating aerator pump. Uh, it's a cartridge pump, so I only need to replace the cartridge and not the housing, which would be very convenient. Behind it is my 1,000 gallon bilge pump. It's only a year old, so I'm going to keep it. The challenge I have here is I need to move the aerator pump forward to make room for a secondary bilge pump that I want to install. Now back here, right through the transom on the running pad, is the fill pump for my live well. And it also is a cartridge pump, which is going to make life easy. Uh, it's a little tight fit in there, so I'm going to have to pull it out so I can access the pump and get it done right. So let me show you how we do it. This is the uh, back of the running pad on my transom. Here's the various holes that come out here. Here's the drain plug. And here is the intake for the pump that goes into the live well. Now there should be a screen on here. Most of them will have a screen. I've got a new one that I'm going to put on here after I get this job done. Now if you have a cartridge pump as I have, you can uh, actually leave this in place and remove the cartridge and replace it in the bilge if there's enough room for you to work. Actually my fit is kind of tight so uh, I need to actually remove this. I'm going to have to take this nut off which I will do and that will allow me to pull the, uh, uh, the pump out where I can get better access to it. I've loosened the nut on the threaded part that goes through my transom that holds this pump in here. This is my live well fill pump so it should pull right out of there. So let's see how this goes. There we go. So there's my pump and as you can see here's the cartridge. Here's this pump from a different angle so we can see it better. Now this is the cartridge right here. To pull it out, there's a lever right here that you have to pull out, get it out of the way, and you just twist this top and there's your motor right there. Pretty amazing. Now you just set this aside and I have a replacement motor and uh, all I have to do is just pop it right in here, twist it, and there's my new motor. That's all I have to do. Now, I will have to splice this in, connect it to the wiring uh, where the other one was connected. Okay, I've disconnected the hoses from my recirculation pump so that I can move it forward to make room for my secondary bilge pump. And it sits in this bracket right here. I'm going to pull it out. So what I have to do now is remove this bracket and move it forward after I install the other the other bilge pump with this one sitting. I'm going to install my secondary bilge pump right here in front of my primary bilge pump. It comes with a fitting that allows you to connect the hose straight off of this right here where it pumps out or you can have a curved fitting and that's what I'm going to do that allows me to put the, the hose above the other one and it will fit in my boat. So this is a pretty neat deal. You have two options here. I like that. I installed the base for the new bilge pump where the aerator pump had been. The new bilge pump twists into its base. Next to the discharge hole for the original bilge pump, I drilled a one inch discharge hole for the new bilge pump. The hose from the new bilge pump will connect to this through hull fitting. Here's the new discharge fitting in place. I applied silicone under the fitting to help lock it in place and to keep water out. Here, the new discharge hose has been attached to the new bilge pump. 
I attached the bracket for the aerator pump forward from the new bilge pump. All right, I've got this just about wrapped. Uh, the bilge pump on my left is the one that was in there. It was only a year old, so I'm leaving it in. Uh, the bilge pump in the middle is the new one I've installed, the backup bilge pump. And I put a new motor in the aerator pump. And you see I've got all the hoses hooked up for my aerator pump. That looks like we're ready to go. Um, all we need to do is get down the water, make sure all the pumps are working right, and we can go fishing. I filled the bills with water, and both bilge pumps gushed water out. My fill pump flushed water into my divided live well. And my aerator system bubbleth over. It's time to go fishing. Thank you.